Good afternoon, or whenever it is for you in your current state. Uh, I am Dr. Kathy S. Miller. Uh, I have my notes written out so that I don't talk for 40 minutes. So if all goes well, it will be eight minutes and 13 seconds that I talk too fast, as I've been reminded by a couple of people from South Africa this week. So I'm concentrating really hard. But that means I'm going to forget what I'm saying by the time I get to the end of the sentence. So uh, I'll also put the notes in the slides when we finish so we can recap. Um, I am the coordinator of Open OK State at Oklahoma State University, where I'm an assistant professor and OER librarian for the Oklahoma State University Libraries. I present as a 54-year-old woman with mid-length, messy, graying hair, and today I'm wearing mostly black with a black and white pattern blazer. If I remember them, which I did, I am also wearing reading glasses. Thank you for joining us to discuss open practices as scholarly and creative works. The purpose of this lightning talk is to identify how diffusion of innovation theory, Rogers 2003 or 2004, one is a book and one's an article, and so I sometimes get it missed up, but provides a lens through which identification of shared vocabulary can highlight the compatibility of open practices and scholarly and creative work. This shift can facilitate immediate consideration of open practices as appropriate for retention, promotion, and tenure, tenure as an alternative to lengthy processes required for inclusion of open practices as a standalone element in faculty dossier. Did that come through making sense? It's, we're trying to make it so that faculty can speak of open practices as scholarly work for tenure. It is my hope that together we can identify shared language highlighting the compatibility of open practices and creative and scholarly work. You're invited to consider how your own open practices are compatible with research, creative and scholarly work in your own fields and begin to consider strategies for communicating open practices as compatible with creative and scholarly work. You're also invited to say, well done, Kathy, you tied that in very well to the abstract you submitted. Yes, that doesn't always happen. Um, so slide two, oh, I'm the boss. Um, what do I point to? hopes and dreams. Uh, many thanks to the GoGN for coming alongside Oklahoma State University Libraries. Yes, oh, I forgot my penguin. She'll hold it up. There's, look. Okay. Uh, to fund my travel uh, to and participation in both the GoGN 10th anniversary workshop and OE Global 2023. And if this weren't a lightning talk, we would stop and sing, but we won't. The full study informing this lightning talk will be available in the Doers 3 publication, anticipa anticipated publication fall 2023, which, yes, it also seems to me like that's where we are now, resulting from the OER in tenure and promotion case study project. Uh, I realize that there may be several in this room uh, to whom the Doers 3 organization is unfamiliar. Um, I did link to their website in my slides, so uh, you can download those, ho oh, ho, click on them and get me an altmetric and uh, read about the Doers 3 organization, but they're doing some cool stuff uh, in the United States that hopefully uh, will draw on some of the work a lot of you are doing. Uh, Open OK State program development is informed by diffusion of innovation theory, which means that I am developing that, proje that project <laughs> based on diffusion of innovation theory. Uh, you can read more about this theory in the GoGN Research and Methods Handbook, as well as, in other th as well as other theories you might find helpful in building out your work in open. For this particular study that we're discussing today, supporting open practices as scholarly work in promotion and tenure, I leaned heavily on the portions of the theory, diffusion of innovation, which describe compatibility as a characteristic that influences the diffusion of an innovation. Uh, before we move forward, though, uh, I invite you to consider how this idea of shared vocabulary resonates with and likely was preceded by uh, the ideas shared in today's keynote presentation uh, about two-eyed seeing. So I haven't dug into that, but as he was speaking this morning, I thought, oh, yeah, that, I, that came first, and it's the same thing, uh, and we maybe westernize it so we can turn back to the way it's been seen for ages. Um, oh, and the next slide. What is this? I'm supposed to be on slide five. Yes. All right, Oklahoma State University uh, is a doctoral granting university in the Midwest Southern United States. Our enrollment of about 25,000 people, includes undergraduate and graduate students, online and face-to-face -face students, and concurrent high school students. Uh, we are classified as very high research, 
or R1, and tenure track faculty are expected to have a meaningful, impactful research profile. We're also a land grant university, which in the United States means that fully a third of our work should be outreach and extension. Um, and one of our goals and our strategic vision right now is to be the land grantiest university. <laughs> For real, that's what they said. I haven't found the operational definition of that uh, or how being land grantiest fits in with collaboration, but uh, we'll, we'll explore that later. Um, I'll also acknowledge some of the uh, challenges and opportunities for reconciliation that come with being a land grant university. Uh, if you want to give that a quick Google, uh, but we won't talk about it more because I'm sure the president of my university is also watching. So she's not. Uh, so anyway, the library included open in its strategic plan in 2013. And since then, we have grown from a series of projects to a sustainable program aligned with the mission and vision of our institution. In 2019, our provost expressed support of open practices as appropriate for consideration as scholarly work in retention and promotion, and the faculty council was on board as well. So that was a, that was a pretty big deal. Uh, and, and they came out and they said it, and we got it in print, and we have it in minutes, uh, and we point to it uh, a lot and say, you've already, you've already said this is okay. We don't need to, we don't need to debate it anymore. Uh, the RPT document revision process, however, is lengthy and unwieldy as many of you know. So in the meantime, we've opted to move the other direction. Rather than revising the documents, we are trying to help faculty see how what they are doing actually aligns already with open practices and come at it from that direction. Rogers defines innovation as an idea or practice perceived as new, which means as Sarah Hammershame, and I'm probably butchering how to say her name, but it is in my references and she's sitting back there. Uh, and others have noted it's likely faculty are engaging in these processes unaware that they have a fancy name. So this identification of shared vocabulary also invites reconsideration, as Dr. Joe Funk said during the Gojian workshop, of the rationale for determining, measuring, and communicating high impact, uh, the impact of research on communities and the world. And so I'll just step into my librarian aside for a little bit and point out that a lot of the things we depend on to communicate our metrics are actually black boxes particular to that publisher and it's in their best interest right to keep that proprietary if if uh, web of science can tell everybody what is theirs the h factor or whatever if if we can allow if we can outsource our expertise and allow someone else who is beholden to stakeholders by law has to guarantee them a profit we outsource our expertise let them tell us whether or not we're worth anything so that's a whole nother long, exciting lunch with librarians. Ask your librarian about that. Say, hey, what do you think? And uh, you'll, you'll, hear some, you'll hear some fun stuff. So stepping away from that, reconsidering our rationale for high impact practice also recenters our faculty expertise and allows us to elevate the importance of what's going on in our local context. See how all that fits in with open, right? Yeah. All right, so let me see where I am. Oh, I wrote that in a really nice way. Uh, when I chat, let me see if I can. Impact on communities and the world. When I chat with faculty, we remind ourselves that research isn't just beakers and lab coats, not that those aren't important, but research is a systematic inquiry which includes identification of a question and a search for either solutions or more questions. Rather than relying only on brands or ingrained practices to communicate scholarly impact, our faculty are encouraged to truly engage, engage with the goals of their departments and fields of research and consider how their work in open actually aligns with those goals. Oh, that sounded much nicer than my little rant, didn't it? So <laughs> pretend that's how I said it. Um, sometimes we just need to change a word. Instead of a classroom resource, faculty realize they've actually designed an opportunity for students to actively engage in systematic inquiry, which can impact the field, the community, and the world. It's a lot and has taken many one-on-one -on -one consultations, formal letters of support, and sparsely attended campus presentations to bring energy to this shift. But it is working. My faculty are now actively seeking out letters of support, articulating their work using their, this shared vocabulary. Um, and what we do is we, we write a letter that then is signed by the associate dean and, and send it for inclusion in their dossier and copy their department head. Um, our materials grant, Open OK State Fellows grants, include a section that says to describe how this open project they're proposing aligns with and supports their area of research. 
Um, and it's absolutely fascinating to read about how it does from their perspective. They use their vocabulary, the vocabulary of their field, and I'll be doggone, it really, it's like, oh, yeah, we really are everywhere, and we matter every place. Uh, even better, faculty are beginning to nominate each other to be open OK State Fellows. There's a link to that in my slide. Uh, lean Marco SV, very much copying his work, um, sending me emails by saying, hey, so-and-so is doing this work too, can we include them as a fellow? And I love that. They're getting excited about how work in open has impacted their work, their field, uh, their trajectory as far as research and, and tenure is concerned, and they're wanting to bring their collaborators and other people on board with it. So um, I have linked some talking points in the slides I've curated from some of the Oklahoma State University retention, promotion, and tenure handbooks. Um, feel free to click through those and you'll be excited to see that what we're doing is in many ways what we want to be doing. So when I skim through those documents and I see those lofty standards, right, that we're supposed to be achieving as researchers and scholars, I realize we're doing it in open. And so it'll be great as we come together, celebrate each other's work and continue to move forward and get better. We are just using different words. In my dream world, which requires no sleep, I'd like to link scholarly work done by you all to each of the points in that document to strengthen understanding of their alignment. Uh, feel free to click through the link and share articles you think would be appropriate as a comment. I think it's set so you can't edit it, but you can put a comment in there. But I, I really would love to say, hey, here's a list of scholarly work that's been curated that shows the shared language in open. I'm trying to stay on top of that, but I, I know there's stuff that I'm missing. Um, for real. So grants frequently require information to be shared openly, or, and so I hear from faculty saying, hey, where can I read more about this? And I'd love to have what's shared with them reflect a broader perspective than just mine. Uh, I send them links to your stuff. So put your stuff right in the doc, make it easier for all of us, and then also we can get you some clicks. As long as the scholarly ecosystem is what it is, we might as well help each other out. So feel free to put your publications in that, and we'll read each other's stuff and you know, our H index will go up. Um, so I've probably talked too fast and I've left stuff out. So watch for the Doers 3 book. Read Dr. Jeff Funk's stuff. She might be about to change everything uh, in the world, not her own life, like, yeah, but doing great work over there. Thanks again to GoGN for the community research and support. Um, our program at Oklahoma State University is also impacted by those in the Open Education Network community, the Alt OER community, Arizona, very much influenced by them, uh, open ed, and really everyone willing to talk to me in a hallway uh, or be patient with how slowly I answer emails. So thank you for sharing your wisdom, experience, and curiosity. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? And I have, there were 247, so I don't know what that means. He's holding something up. I have a reading glasses. I don't know what it says. Two minutes. Thank you. Hopefully you're all busily clicking through that doc, putting in your journal articles. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. So basically, uh, Marin's asking if I'm it for OER at Oklahoma State and how we've managed to spread the word on it. And um, right now, I am primarily it, although I do scoop up everyone around me. So we've got our website lists a team. Uh, COVID shrunk it down, right, as we were less connected, but we're trying to branch back out and, and broaden it. Um, so that's, as we broaden it, it will grow, grow more. Um, and as far as how I managed to connect with so many faculty, I just, I go, I go to everything I can. I go to the faculty council meetings. I go to reading groups. I just try to make sure they know my face um, to the point where maybe they're starting to cross the sidewalk, right? When we, and that's why when we're online, it's like, you, you can't leave. We're in the same meeting. But um, so just lots of that uh, interpersonal communication 
Um, and so if you look at the vision of innovation theory, it talks about mass media, and then you're gonna, then you go to smaller communication channels, and that's where past the mass media part and to where it's that interpersonal communication. Um, but it's interesting that you asked that. Okay, no, this is recorded. So thank you for asking that, uh, Ryan. And we can have another talk later that's not recorded, and I'll expand <laughs> upon that. But um, it, the way I came to this notion of shared vocabulary is, okay, I didn't come to it, I didn't make it up. We just heard a presentation, write a keynote about how it's not new. But I grew up in an educator family, a fourth generation educator. I'm also a music educator. And um, so, as you know, K-12 education isn't funded. Arts education, definitely not funded. So grew up where the family business was really sharing and borrowing and uh, iterating on other people's work. And when I came into higher ed uh, and found out that doing that had a name and could get grants, I thought, I can change the name for what I do and take your money. And then going out to faculty and saying that same thing. You're already doing that. Someone decided to define it. Let's make our workforce. So yeah, thank you for asking that. Oh gosh, and that was recorded. Hold on. Okay. So, all right. Yes, one more question. Thank you, thank you. So she's asking how we're stepping away from traditional understandings, traditional ingrained understandings of what scholars, scholarly works are. Uh, and you know, we have an IP policy, intellectual property policy that was updated in 2019 that has definitions in it uh, as they're trying to say who owns what. And at our institution, faculty own all their work. There's a definition of scholarly work in there that aligns with what we're doing. Uh, and so that's what I would say is go, hey friend, What's your operational definition of scholarly? Oh, looky there, it, it didn't say publish in that journal. It says doing things that increase engagement and impact the world at large. And so one of the very specific ways, and I'm not a shill for them, but uh, we publish our stuff in press books, which gives it a, an international exposure. I'm like, give me your stuff, and bam, you've, you've had an international impact on the world. So if that's helpful. But really, if you dig into actual operational definitions is where you find the magic. Okay, I'm being pointed to you. All right, thank you. <laughs>